welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are having a great holiday weekend. This is Memorial Weekend and I just wanted to show you guys a little bit around the, the garden just to update you on some things because uh, everything is just growing so well. Our temps have been so uh, high the last few days. So like today was 97. Tomorrow's gonna be 99 and so any anyways my garden is just exploding in growth and so I just wanted to kind of share that with you guys and let you guys see everything so um, by the way my name is Keisha and if this is your first time watching one of my videos um, you are watching my channel Lakeisha Keen Saving Greens and I am in zone 8b in the high desert of Southern California so I just wanted to show you guys a little bit around and what we've been up to. Everything is so green and lush and pretty. I'm going to take everything in uh, segments and, and just, just, you know, give it to the segment. There's so much stuff growing in each one. I don't know if you guys can see this on film. Well, you can kind of see the dark lining uh, let's see over here um, this morning when I got up all of this was flooded in fact let me step back everything from the cement right here all the way down to those that pile of twigs and branches to everything over here on the sides was all flooded and all the way over to that garden bed up against the fence. It was all flooded. The pipe, the tubing came loose over here. And you can see it's still, this is still separated. So I'm gonna have to get a longer tubing because I had to change that timer. The one I was using malfunctioned. And so I had to change out the timer which is a different size from the one I had before, and yada, yada, yada. And so, <laughs> look at this. Everything is growing good. Look at these nasturtiums. This morning, I made an omelet using nasturtium leaves. That was pretty good. So I just wanted you to see the evolution of how everything is growing here. And there's a lot of things that's growing very, very well. If you remember this corn from my last video that I planted in here, it's starting to get past its shock <laughs> slowly. <laughs> but I wanted to show you guys some things like these tomatoes. These are midnight snack tomatoes. I'm going to be tying this up to the trellis because it needs it now. And I'm going to be harvesting these onions because they're ready to get harvested. And I wanted to show you one other thing. Look at this, you guys. I started stringing up my tomatoes. You see the string? Started stringing up my tomatoes because they're getting big enough that they need some support now, which is nice. And they all have flowers on them too, so that's even better. But I only did the first one. I'm going to you guys how I'm doing this, so I will be including that in this video or in the next video. I'm not sure yet, but everything is looking good I know I said I was gonna do a tour video that was gonna be my next video to do but I just um, ran into an issue with that other bed I was hoping to have all that finished so I could do a complete tour with you guys but oh it closed up now I'm gonna have to post a photo of it I had my first morning flower bloom and open this morning, so 
that was nice. I have a picture of it open that I'm going to put on here. And this carrot that survived being in this bed with all the seaweed and everything. quick look at everything. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, get a lot of this other stuff done so that I can show you and start the garden tour because there's a lot of things I'm just excited to talk to you about and a lot of these tomatoes, the different varieties and stuff so I'm really excited for it. One other thing I want to point, well, two other things I want to point out real fast to you is my crepe myrtle started blooming. Look at that. It's so pretty. And, you guys, I don't know what I'm going to do with these pomegranates. Okay, you see all the bloom the blossoms on the ground that the wind blew off even with all of these on the ground there's hundreds more up in this tree and they're forming they're starting to form pomegranate fruit but it's just so many flowers still <laughs> this thing is gonna be overloaded with pomegranates so I'm, interest, I'm interested to see how many of these that got pollinated will actually grow to maturity. Because there's a lot of them on here. And a lot of flowers still. I mean, all in between. <laughs> it's just tons and tons of flowers on this tree. And a lot of fruit already starting to develop. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I might have to open up my garden and let people come in and harvest these when they're ready. Harvest some of them and share it. Because I think I'm going to have more than my fair share of what I normally use them for. So... update on everything and, and just let you see an overview of how everything is, is is looking right now. Everything is nice and green and just thriving. So we're over here. We're about to, my honey is about to uh, <laughs> flame torch this uh, bed, this garden bed here to get all the weeds and stuff. So we're hoping for the best. It's just an easier way to get rid of a lot of the um, weeds and stuff that's growing up in here. Ooh. So. It's also good because the char part just goes back in to feed the soil. So. I'm hoping that this works out really good for us because I really didn't want to have to go through and pull all these weeds that was growing up out of the sides. So. It's easier and beneficial at the same time. <laughs> Hopefully, this uh, heating up the soil like this and burning the top of it, hopefully it's going to kill a lot of the weed seeds too. Hmm. Not too bad. Okay, so I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like after it's all done. So I wanted to give you guys an up-close look at what I've got here. All I did basically was 
tie a knot around this. It's a hair clippy. <laughs> and I got a bag, a gallon bag full of them at a yard sale for a dollar, the whole bag. I mean, you guys know me. I like to use whatever I can find that's available. That doesn't cost me a whole lot of money. And I'm guessing there's like about 80 clips or so in that bag. So all I did was tie a knot, tie the string, the twine, and a knot um, on the clip. And as you can see on this one, then I just wrap the string around the stem a few times. And then that was it. And it holds pretty steady. And then just going up the string here, I just toss the spool over the top of the crossbar there. And I left some extra so that I could try either leaning the tomatoes down Okay, so there's two methods of stringing. So one method is you just tie it, tie the string to the top, and as the tomato vines out and grows up, up the string, then you just take some additional clips and you clip the, you continuously clip the tomato plant to the string. I've also seen others where they have the excess string and what they do is as the tomato plant grows and gets up to the top of the string then that excess string they untie it and they lower the plant the weight of the tomatoes on there will allow this to happen. They lower the plant and now you have a whole bunch more string for it to climb up and it's almost limitless to how long you can grow that indeterminate tomato vine. So I haven't really figured out which way exactly. Um, I figured I'd put that excess and leave that excess up there. So in case I tried, wanted to try to do that, I can. If not, then, you know, I have other clips and stuff that I could use or I could just um, continue to wrap the tomato vine along this stem without using clips too. I mean there's so many different ways and I'm so new to using the string in this manner that I just wanted to leave options for me to test and try and see which way I liked better, uh, which way worked best for me. So. I'm pretty proud of it though. It looks really good and I'm glad I was able to find those hair clips like that. <laughs> so I have the rest of these to do and I'll get them all strung up and everything and and situated. I um look at these potato flowers. I um noticed that most of my tomato plants here on tomato row has flowers starting so that's exciting because you know once there's flowers the next step will be fruit so I'm happy about that and we'll see how everything goes this year this is the trellising system that I'm that I'm gonna be using and, you know, as I always do, I'll let you know if it works out good for me or which way works out best for me. And that way you'll have a better idea maybe of trying it out for yourself and seeing what works best for you. But that is it. And the, oh, I wanted to point out too, the melons that I planted on the side here to grow up this side the sides of the trellis they all came up so I'm happy about that too because these melons will then grow up these side trellises and let's see that's west 
this way is south. And then we've got east that way. And then, of course, north is this way. So, with the hottest part of the day, and the hottest part of the sun exposure on these plants coming from this direction here, I figured having something grow up the sides here would only help shade. So I planted things that love a lot of sun and heat, which are the melons and watermelons to grow up on these sides here to give some side shade to the tomato plants. And then I have things in the working right now in the works for to shade the front of it to just give it a little bit extra shade when our triple digits start to occur which will begin usually it starts in July all of July and all of August that's what it looks like all finished so it makes it a little easier so I don't have to uh, go in and dig all that grass out <laughs> but anyways I still have that bed to plant the bed right here next to it to plant my tea garden bed over there and my herb bed I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I just wanted to take the time to say thank you to those who serve in our military uh, forces who lost their lives um, in battle and I just wanted to take a moment to just acknowledge their sacrifice and honor them. Now as you guys know I have two children that are in the military right now in the Navy. I have a son and a daughter and my husband is retired Air Force and then um, my other son that just graduated from high school is considering the Air Force. And so I might have three, who knows, maybe all of my children might one day serve our country. And I'm a proud mom for that. Um, I really appreciate the fact that, you know, they know what they signed up for and they're out there. Uh, my son just got back from being deployed since um, from last October, he's been gone and uh, he just got back this week. So, yeah, I'm a real proud mom. And it just bothered me because on a group that I'm on, I had posted up the pictures of the food that we made and everything um, yesterday and how we honored our family members. I have a nephew who was also in the Navy and we were just taking the time to honor uh, all of our military uh, family members and celebrating my son's return. And somebody said that I, uh, that the holiday is not about honoring the living members. Today is just about honoring the dead, the deceased ones. And I understand that. I really do. Um, and, you know, I, I didn't get upset or anything, but, you know, I just feel like why wait for my kids to be in a casket? To come home in a casket to honor them and show my appreciation and show them how proud I am of them. I'd rather do that while they're alive because once they're dead they're not gonna know or not, they're not gonna realize that I'm doing that. So I don't know it just kind of struck a chord with me because I don't want to diminish the sacrifices that were made. I know there's a lot of moms and dads, uh, husbands and wives, children who've lost loved ones uh, in battle, in war. Um, and 
I really appreciate that. That's why I have the freedom to be able to do the things I do. That's why my children um, gladly serve because of the valor of those who served before them and with them and who paved the way so that, you know, they can proudly serve. And, you know, I, so I'm by no means am I trying to diminish or take away from those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Um, at the same time, I feel like they, what better way to honor their memory than to show respect and love and appreciation by honoring the ones who are currently serving, who are still facing that potential end. So, y'all, I don't know, what do you guys think? Um, do you think that Memorial Day should be strictly just to remember those who have fought and um, paid with their lives? Um, or is it okay to also, in that remembrance, um, acknowledge those who are still putting their lives on the line? Um, that's just something that I choose to do with my family. I choose to, uh, I choose to just uh, show them as much as I can, every chance that I can, uh, what, how I feel about them and the responsibility that they've taken on. Um, so what do you think? Do you think that, uh, that it should strictly be just that? Or do you think that by us showing respect and honoring even those, I mean, there are those who served with the deceased that made it back home alive. But what about them? You know, they deserve to be honored too, and not just for Veterans Day or um, um, Armed Forces Day or memorial well not even memorial if you know if it's only meant for um the fallen but they deserve to be honored and respected and appreciated i feel every day of the year um every day that they serve every day that the ones that are retired who put on those uniforms and went off to foreign lands and you know and stood firm for our country I believe that they all deserve to be honored not just one day of remembrance but every day all of them so anyways that's my take I'm interested to hear what you think about that and how you feel about that so thank you so much for watching and as always, you guys, God bless.